Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dylan Jarris and I am a wife and a mom of two boys and an Etsy seller of six years. We do three to four hundred thousand dollars a year on Etsy and today I'm going to share with you the five mistakes that I made when I first started on Etsy. The first mistake was that I created my shop with one item in it. I honestly don't know what I was thinking. At the time I was trying a lot of different side hustles. I was walking dogs, I was house sitting, I was selling jewelry from China on eBay, and I thought, might as well try Etsy. So I put one photo of one item in my shop. For some reason, I thought that would be enough. It took two months to get my first sale, and by the time that I got my first sale, I didn't really even remember that I had started an Etsy shop. In, in hindsight, I should have launched my shop with at least 10 to 20 items in it. My second mistake is that my photos were awful. Now this was a time when I thought it was really good to up the exposure on your photos. So I just kind of swiped that exposure all the way to the right and called it good. I thought that everyone else had really bright photos and for some reason I thought that would do it for me. But in hindsight it really distorted the item and the quality and the details of it. It just looked bad. So since then I've learned a lot more about good photos. I still take all the photos with the iPhone and it works perfect. My third mistake was that I was not picky enough with who I chose to sell my items to. I would take any customer. I said yes to the most nightmarish customers. These are the people who send you 20 rapid fire messages. They, they took up so much of my time with their incessant back and forth that my hourly wage ended up being pennies for their order. They were also a nightmare after the order. So my mistake here was that I did not pick up on the red flags when they were messaging me before they placed their order. It would have been so much better not to accept their business in the first place. I should have trusted my gut when reading people and just understood that not everyone is your customer and that sometimes it's just not worth it because certain people just can never be pleased. My fourth mistake when I started on Etsy was that I tried to compete on price. I tried to undercut my competition with my pricing. I would list my items for $1 less than theirs. Now this turned into a, a downward spiral because they would do the same thing and they would undercut me by $1 and then I would undercut them by $1. And then in the end, we both had dropped our prices about 20% in order to just win at being the lowest price. In hindsight, we both lost. It's actually better not to have the lowest price because it creates the perception that yours is somehow better or more valuable than the cheapest thing. You don't wanna have the cheapest option. Usually customers won't choose the very cheapest option. So now we don't compete on price. We don't even run sales in our shop. And the perception of our items is that they are of premium high quality. We're about 20% higher in our pricing than the competition. But because we've been around six years and have over 17,000 sales, customers want our item. And in hindsight, I wish I would have thought about the perception I was creating of our items by trying to be the cheapest. And the last mistake, that I made as a new Etsy seller was that I did not hire childcare. I thought that I could do it while my son was napping, but the demand was way too high for me to keep up that way. I think our growth was really limited in that first year because I did not hire childcare or a nanny for my oldest son. We did $134,000 in that first year, but I did not hire childcare until he was six months old. Up until he was six months old, I tried to do it all. I had him in the ergo carrier. I tried to use his little 30 minute cat naps to complete orders. Not only help with him, but I could have used uh, a nanny's help with the house. I had a scarcity mindset and I thought, what if the shop doesn't do well? What if I'm not making enough money with the shop to cover the cost of childcare? I thought that paying a nanny would take all the profit that I made during the day from the shop. I didn't wanna to have to fire someone, but I should have believed in myself more and trusted the results that we were already seeing. Even in my son's first six months, we did almost $80,000. I think we really limited our growth that first year. I bet we could have done $200,000 if I had only had the guts to hire a nanny. When, you, when you're a growing business, at some point you have to take a risk and hire someone, whether that's someone to help in your shop, in the business, or someone to help with the things outside of your business that you no longer have time for, like housework, laundry, cleaning. If we had a childcare, we probably could have done 200,000. That's a $66,000 difference. Now I know childcare would not have cost us $66,000, but it was my risk averse kind of scarcity mindset, they call it, 
that stopped me from doing it. So those are the biggest mistakes I made when I started my Etsy shop. If you are starting out or if you are struggling to scale or maybe you're seeing a softening in demand this year, um, I would love to talk to you. I am actually going to be opening up a course with one-on-one -on -one coaching. And this course is the blueprint to a multi six-figure Etsy shop. We've been um, multi six figures ever since our second year in business. We now do three to 400,000 a year and it's really stable. I'm really excited to take a limited number of business owners under my wing. We're gonna dive deep into your shop and we're going to make sure that you're not making the same mistakes that I made. And I'm going to help set you up to have the same success that I had in my shop. If you are interested in just talking about it, um, I'd love to just chat with you about it. Below you can sign up for the wait list or just schedule a strategy call with me and we can chat about kind of your shop and what's going on, what your struggles are, and see if there's anything I can do to help. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I'm doing daily videos here, and I also do a lot of posts over on Instagram. My Instagram is at Dylan Jarris, and we would love to connect. All right, see you next time.